Hello and welcome. It's Monday's Motivational Monday by Jim and Lucy. Today with our special guest from Atlanta, Georgia. And this is Pam, Pam Lionmiller. Hi, Pam. Hi, Lucy. How are you? Hey, Jim. Hello there. Doing great. Thank you. So I guess you're not as cold as we are in Calgary, Alberta. So. <laughs> it is and- a beautiful spring day in Atlanta, actually. We're having a bit of a reprieve from the cold. It's wonderful. I think it's almost, I think it's always a beautiful day in Atlanta. I, I, I it comes to my mind, it's always a sunny day. You have to come visit, Ben. We will. I, I, I want some biscuits and gravy. Yes, I have to do. <laughs> so he, he likes southern food, okay? <laughs> yeah. He doesn't like going to gym afterwards, so, but uh, that's okay. So, Pam, uh, you have a great profile and you specialize in so many motivational topics, but today we talk about the power of emotional intelligence and please tell us more how does it affect our everyday lives because when we think about emotional intelligence we usually think about employee being in an office working in the team what else there well you know it's interesting i want to take a minute to just define generally emotional intelligence because i think we hear the term a lot but a lot of people don't really understand Um, what that entails. So if I could just take a minute, you know, and how it might apply to us, really, there's five pieces to emotional intelligence, and you can read all different books on it. Some people have different takes, but basics are, there's kind of five pieces, and it starts with yourself and your self-awareness and, and, you know, of your own emotions. That's really the first place to start. And then, um, you, you can also move into social, you know, and social awareness. So there's, there's these different pieces. It's kind of like you're looking at yourself and you're looking at how you impact others and how you can influence others in a room. There's also your internal motivation, which is, I think, a lot of what you speak about and how to get people to tap into that. You know, when you wake up every day, what gets you up? What's your internal motivation? And it's implicit in what you're doing in your life. And it and it's it's really a great thing to be able to focus on, but it's kind of an outcome of some of the other areas, both the self and the social areas of um, emotional intelligence. So and, I, yes, I didn't mean to cut you off, ma'am, but you're, you're oh, saying you're important you have to think about we're hearing about all of these layoffs meta meta is laying off additional 10,000 people yesterday and these things are not new they happen all the time uh, but how do you get people using emotional intelligence everybody's heard the word but how do you how do you get people to apply it to themselves where they're sitting back wondering woe is me now to use it to be more resilient and creative Yeah, that's a really great question. I mean, that first thing is that you have to be in touch with how things are impacting you, what your emotions are about the situation that you're in and and own that and be able to process that. So you might be um, very down, you know, about, you know, and feel a, a little bit victimized by a whole layoff situation. And you need to turn that around to understand how to come up out of that and reach out. In other words, process that in a positive way and and own some of that negative that you're feeling and be able to apply that to move in a positive direction. Um, If you just ignore the emotions that you're having, you know, eventually they build up and and they're showing when you show up, uh, whatever you're doing. You've all met people who you can tell they've, they've been having some bad things going on before they met you. Uh, Then other people come and you meet them and you think, wow, what a breath of fresh air, like the emotional intelligence of each person and how they're handling their own emotions so that 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 affects how they come across to others. You know, that's their level of emotional intelligence where they can be aware, first of all, and control it, second of all. Oh, my goodness. You just hit us something really big just now. I mean, because in, in, in in a business where you have people coming in and we don't realize what everybody's going through. Everybody's going through something. And we come in with the chip on our shoulder. We think it's all about us. Somebody doesn't speak to us in the hallway or whatever it is. And we get upset about it. And then we take them and pass them to somebody else. But now you're talking about the emotional intelligence now to a, to a finer level. Yeah. 
I like that. And how they're showing up. So Lucy, you know, you can tell that with people that you're getting together with as well. And, and when you first meet them and, and sometimes you, you uh, just impress me as someone who treats others with kindness, just in the short time that I've been able to interact with you. And I can imagine that you send those vibes out and you're going to treat people well. And if you're not treated well in return, the first thought you should have is, you know what? That's not me because I did my best to treat them with kindness, which is what we all should be trying to do is reach out in a positive way to others. Think of the best of them first. If you get a negative back, you have to realize that they maybe had something else happen before they got to you. And it's not yeah. really you. Well, it is so important. Thank you for pointing that. And our listeners, I'm pretty sure they can take that advice into action and not react the very next time because there's so many reasons and we are all so different and you especially noticing into uh, multicultural environments like Atlanta, Georgia or like Calgary, Alberta or many other places in the world where there are people come from different backgrounds and different cultures and sometimes there's also language barrier or accent and we get upset for no reason and that getting upset affects other people and ourselves and our next step and our next ability to see opportunities around. Yes. What do you think is the, is perhaps one of the, uh, the greatest, um, um, the problems that people have right now, that emotional intelligence, if it's really used well, it can help them in, in your business. Well, the positive thing about emotional intelligence, honestly, is that if you have a very low level of emotional intelligence in any of the areas, guess what? You can change that. You can learn to do better in the area of emotional intelligence. There are other assessments about us. You know, you hear about behavior styles or personality assessments, all that. And, and, for the most part, you are who you are in some areas, but in the area of emotional intelligence, you can learn to be better. That's one of the things I love about it. And I will say that I didn't used to have a very high level of emotional intelligence. And let me give you an example. When I was younger and working in the corporate world, if somebody would hit me the wrong way or say the wrong thing or in a meeting, you know, it, I wouldn't agree with them. I would say it right away. I would come back at them or have that disagreement or say whatever was on my mind at the time, not realizing the impact I was having on that other person or the others that were in the meeting or the group, if there were more than one. And what I was able to learn is, hold on, Pam, Think what you're going to think, but then take a step, take just a pause and formulate in your brain how you want to say what you want to say so that it comes more positively to that other person rather than accusing or judgmental or all those other negative things that I used to just not really have an idea of how it impacted them. Now I'm able to change that if I just take a beat and think about what I'm going to say. You know, somebody emotionally impacts me and I can feel it. You know, you can feel it when you get angry or you start to have that emotion. I know not to say anything at that moment. I, I know I need to sit back because what I'm going to say is not going to be helpful. I need to sit back and think about it and formulate how I'm going to respond before I actually do it. That's one of the areas that I've been able to grow in emotional intelligence and it's, it's really helped me honestly get along with more people. <laughs> I used to be a little bit too direct and not realize the impact of what I was saying or how I was acting. Oh, forgive me, honey. I, you know, I'm impressed with the fact is that somehow you did this personal assessment along the way to say, oh, this isn't good. Or this isn't the way I want to be. And you changed it. Well, yes. And that was before I realized what it was. I didn't know it was called emotional intelligence then we're talking 25 years ago or more now i've been able to read and get certified in emotional intelligence and i understand the details and the science behind what what i was doing but at the time i just realized i don't like the impact of what i just did that's what happened i got the negative feedback 
And I, I didn't want to get that negative feedback. So I had to figure out how to change what I was doing because I, I can't change the other person. I can only change me and how I react. That's another thing that helps you <laughs> keep a positive attitude moving forward, especially in ongoing relationships, uh, partnerships, marriages, people that you work closely with all the time. You, yeah, it's helpful in that dance of long-term relationships. Yes. It's, I mean, can... it's impressive. Yes. So I, have, I have a question. Uh, when it comes to emotional intelligence, how different it is and how different the process of improvement uh, when it comes to introverts and extroverts? Uh, you know, I think that mannerisms for introverts and extroverts, how they operate in the world are a little bit different. Uh, I will say that extroverts can be introverts for a short amount of time and vice versa. Introverts can be extroverts for a short amount of time. It just takes more work to be outside of your natural wiring, but you can do it. Introverts are often really great in theater, for example. So they're, they're getting outside of themselves for that theater production or whatever they might be doing. Uh, extroverts can also listen attentively. Again, they're having to think about it a lot more than an introvert would, would because it doesn't come as naturally to them. Uh, but in the area of emotional intelligence, I feel like extroverts have a tendency, it's more comfortable for them to react immediately or be more outgoing, obviously, and externally show what they're thinking, whereas introverts naturally you know, keep things inside or ruminate over it a little bit longer before they respond. But you know what? Either one can be a negative. If the introvert doesn't respond quickly enough for the person they're interacting with, that person they're interacting with is going to start to think about what that introvert might be thinking. You know, we get our own self-talk in our head. If they're not responding to me, then that maybe that's not good. And we start to go down this negative path. Um, so you know, I, th I think there's a dance, again, to be had there, but introverts natu naturally take a little bit of time to think about things. I'm obviously an extrovert uh, or have become an extrovert. I don't know that I've always been that way. I've really worked on my soft skills and my people skills because I have a technical background. I'm a computer science and math major in college, but um, when I was younger, I just had to learn how to interact with people. We moved a lot, and I was if I was going to survive, I had to had to learn those skills. So I think, I think it's a bit of a learned thing. Well, it reminds me of the adage that uh, Jim Rohn, the famous speaker said, he said, you're not a tree, you can change. It doesn't matter how you were born, you're not a tree, you can change it. And I admire how you, you know, along the way, you just kept adjusting, adjusting, and adjusting. Yeah, that, I would say I'm a good example of that, yes. Yes, that's the stuff that human beings are made of that you have to do because you always have to be adaptable and be resilient because things are going to happen. Resilience, exactly. And Lucy, for your Motivational Monday, uh, people have to think about being resilient. And one of the ways to do that is always be a lifelong learner. And okay, I hit a roadblock over here, but what's next? I mean, there's a reason for this. What? Where can I use my skills and ability? Or how can I change the way I reacted in that situation to do better the next time? There's always a positive learning that can come out of any situation. Absolutely. Well, that's great advice. There's a lot to think about, a lot to analyze. So we're going to do a lot of self-analysis this week. Dear listeners, please go to Pam's website. It's Pam. Landmiller.com. You can find link in the description to this episode. Work with her because you need it. We all need it. You know, I highly encourage this. I've had a Harvard professor on our other blog blog uh, program, and uh, this is really fascinating because you explain emotional intelligence in a way that I believe the average person can understand. It. Not that I mean, they can not only understand it but apply it to their lives, which is what we want them to do. Yeah, if I could leave your audience with something that they could do right away to start to see how they're doing with their emotional intelligence, they don't necessarily need to take an assessment, although those are available. Uh, if they just start keeping a journal of some sort or write on a piece of paper or make a note in their phone about the emotions that they feel throughout the day, 
and what made them feel that way, like what they're reacting to in that moment, they'll start to get a picture of how they're moving through their lives. And they can then look back and evaluate that and say, is this good? Do I want to keep it this way? Or do I really want to work on changing that? Um, you know, maybe you have something that triggers you with a child or a spouse, and you realize that it sends you into a negative emotion. And maybe once you journal about that and you see a pattern there, then you can go look and say, okay, I want to make a change there and start to implement some positive changes in your life. That is great advice and great exercise. Dear listeners, please take it into action today, not tomorrow, just right now. <laughs> yes. How do people find you on your website? Yes, my well, website. Uh, okay. Pam Line Miller, it's L E I N, which I'll sure, I'm sure it'll be in the show notes and on LinkedIn, pamlinemiller.com. And I, I look forward to interacting with anyone. Lucy and Jim, thank you so much for inviting me to be on Motivational Monday. I love the title. Even the title, it's exciting. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you very much for joining us and sharing this valuable advice. Uh, this was one of the greatest interviews this year. You take care. This is Motivational Monday by, by Jim, Jim and Lucy. Lucy. Follow our podcast. And check out our website, jimandlucywoods.com.